Great evening, everyone. <clears throat> I thought this evening I would read something from a book I was putting together. It's 220 pages altogether. I actually put this together. It's called Song of the Butterfly, Finding the Freedom Within. <laughs> yes, that is actually me with my fat little face back in 2005. <laughs> okay. Things have changed drastically since then. <laughs> yes, I don't even look like the same person. Anyway, Song of the Butterfly, Finding the Freedom Within. Um, and what this book is, it is excerpts that were uh, taken from uh, all of my websites, uh, my groups that I had. So these were guidance things for people to think about, instruction given, um, things for people to sit with, contemplate. Um, so each one of these is an excerpt from a longer thing. So I just pulled out the most important parts of them. So the, we're starting at number 513. And this goes through to number 532. And I thought I would do the one just based on fear. So all of these excerpts have to do with guidance based on fear. So since people keep asking me, Guruji, Guruji, can you give us more? <laughs> I decided, well, okay, let me read the excerpts from here um, and hopefully people get something from this. Okay, so I'm only reading the part that's based on fear. This is, this actually, this section is fear, then desire, then emotions. But today we will do fear. So number 513, fear, anxiety, panic attacks. It is fear of loss. Fear that you are some transient life that has death waiting at its door. Is it fear? that you do not know what is waiting? Is there eternal life? Or does death mean being extinguished? One fears circumstances. One thinks that desires, the collecting of temporal things are equated with peace, contentment, and safety. That aversions are safety nets so walls are built and one constructs a prison rather than a castle of safety. No matter how nice the edifice, it can still be a prison of our own design and construction. This is what fear of loss, fear of the unknown create and continue to create and sustain until the pattern is broken through by some type of a spiritual sadhana or living practice that tears away the delusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on because it's a little, the light gets a little dark here. Number 514, searching only ends when one stops running faces the fears and sees that they are all illusions of our own creation. Only then one finds out what Moses found, that I am that I am. Number 515, fear is the foundation that most live from, around, and within. Yet, they attempt to convince themselves it's something else. Number 516. 
those that are living in a fear realm are clinging to past events and projecting fear and trepidations into the future ruminations. These events are over. You continue living in fear and create such mountains out of molehills that you do not see your way out. But I assure you that nothing may come against one that stands in the light of truth. Life is eternal. Only the gross form is shed when your work is completed. That is all. And your work is at this time is to see through these illusions of truth that you hold fast to where you are not held at all. It's your own mind that is keeping you in this pain and fear, fear of those around you that can in no way harm you, except that you hold fast to what is said and take it to be so. It is not so, and fallacy has no way to bind one except within their own acceptance of it. Let me say that again. Fallacy has no way to bind one except within your own acceptance of it. Okay. So let's continue on. 517. Now this is one I get... <laughs> a lot about fears and entities and dark entities, etc. For those that fear dark entities, the only dark entities are those of our own making by misunderstanding and ignorance of the eternal laws of truth. These fears of the mind may be undone if you quit chasing after them, if you quit running from them and giving them power over your life. No one can do anything against you except what you allow. What is done to the body is done and over. What is done to the mind is also done only in the moment. But what remains is our own ignorance and clinging to the drama and making it so. We replay a long, overdone act and then give birth to more and more exaggerated mindsets of negative nature. So be willing to see the light for what it is. Be willing to let go of the darkness of ignorance and fear. Number 518. There can be great fear when the personal sense begins to break apart. Will I become a zombie? Will I be a rock? Will the emotions be lost? All the fears of the unknown attempt to derail the train to freedom, so to speak. Number 519. So, how does one come out of all this pain and suffering? There is simply to see and cognize that it is over. The pain that is now is of our own clinging to a past event. So what hold, so what hold can that past event have on you except that power to hinder which you yourself give it? Do you not yet have your life and breath? You cling to perceived wrongs done to your persona and body, but what can touch spirit and truth? The body is simply a mechanism of experience and will eventually fall away. The body may be touched, but it's over. The mind is holding on to these perceived slights and hurts and continue 
to give them more life than what they really possess. No emotion or hurt can live on its own. Let me say that again. No emotion or hurt can live on its own. It only has life while we ruminate about it and let it pull us out into a sea of misery and despair. And this misery and despair is of our own creation for the event which gave it life is long ago gone. Now you wear the glasses of fear and mistrust and so everything that comes is suspect. And as so you will find that which you are seeking something to fear and run from, but it need not be so. If you are always looking for fearful events, you will find them. The mind will generate, will create, will keep the body in this perpetual motion of flight or fight. Okay? By what you keep your attention on. Okay. So let's go forward. Number 520. Listen and listen well and take heart to all that is given. I also once lived in fear and self-persecution. It was when I awoke to the fact that I need not accept others' opinions of negative natures, nor did I need to keep recreating the pain over and over again that I became free within myself. At that point, it was known that I was ever free, but I had kept myself in chains where in truth none existed except within the confines of my own mind and beliefs. So read this passage again and again and again until it's understood. This is something to ruminate on, to get, to challenge, to see if it is true or not. Okay? Something to find in your own life to pull you out of the drama you continue to create and recreate and recreate. Number 521. Channel yourself in a direction towards light and no longer the despair of ignorance and pain. It can be done, but you must let loose of the looking towards the negative and pain, for they are then self-generated, and you will continue to find that which you pursue. So stop pursuing pain and the ignorance of despair. You are not created to darkness and despair, but to light and truth. Number 522, get yourself grounded. And this is what was being said today. Get yourself grounded. Don't let your fears run amok. See that in this moment, you are safe. What is there in this moment to harm you? There is simply your apprehension, which is growing into a magnified fear. So stop yourself and go into the breath. Let it slow and relax. Begin here. Let it slow and relax and become aware of it only. Let nothing else intrude upon this space. Simply watch it and see that it is life 
you have life. You are fine in this moment. The mind is simply thoughts that come and go from nowhere to nowhere and can in no ways do harm except that you cling to them and acknowledge them as so. You can and will get better, but you must begin to see it is your own willingness to climb out that is needed. Your willingness to climb out is needed. Okay. Number 523. One has to stop and be willing to allow the fear to come full force to see it has no holds. One has to stand their ground and simply surrender rather than running, only then is the illusion discovered to have been of our own design. And this is what was being experienced. If you watch the movie, the, the I think it was called The Little Buddha, and it's very well portrayed where he's sitting there and the fire is coming and the demons are coming and all these things are coming and he's sitting there stoically let him come, let him come, let him come. And if you can sit and observe and sit and observe, you will see that it is illusion. But you have to challenge it. You have to allow it to come full force without running, without cowering, without trying to fight without doing all the things that one usually does. And these things will come. They will come to challenge you. Every fear you have ever had is going to fly in your face to challenge you. It's part of the path. Okay. But those are all illusions created, sustained by mind power. And what is being sustained by mind power can also be released and seen to be what it is ephemeral in nature. Okay, something of your own creation. So let's go forward. 524. There is only one self. There's nothing to banish other than your holdings and fears, which in turn as ego are created through your own attention, where your mind is focused, that is what will be created. You have so much attention and intention on being the doer that you continue to pull in that which you think is to be struggled against, i.e. negative thought patterns. You inadvertently continue to create which, that which you fear. Whatever you see is not the goal. Netty, netty, not this, not this, not this. No matter how wonderful this white gem appears, it is simply another elusive manifestation of transient phenomena. And it is not that which you seek. So don't attempt to manufacture it. Let go of third eye meditations. Go into the heart. Surrender. Let go. What is not self is illusion. What is there to fear in illusion? It has no substance. The only substance it can gain is that which the mind gives it. Shakti, 
will continue to manufacture the drama until you finally surrender one way or another. Do you want to continue to focus on external events, looking for white gems, etc.? Or do you want to let go and dissolve into that self that is ever present, that grand is? I am ever present. Open the heart, jump in, and then know I am and beyond I am. Number 525. Oh, there's nothing to fear. Take refuge in the Guru. Take refuge in the heart. Take refuge in Shiva. Let go of self-effort. You cannot strive to enter that which is ever present. I'm going to say that again. You cannot strive to enter that which is ever present. <laughs> Sit. Put intention in the heart. Om Namah Shivai. Do not chase what rises. Neti neti, not this, not this, not this. Om Guru Om. Neti neti, not this, not this. And Guru is meaning that which is weighty with knowledge. So Om, that which is weighty with knowledge. Om, let me have that light. Continue letting go until the pregnant void, the ocean of self, dissolves, dissolves the salt cube of ego until it is no more. I'm going to say that again. Continue letting go until the pregnant void, the ocean of self, dissolves the salt cube of ego, and it is no more. Number 526. As long as there is a fear or a clinging to the ideation of needing protection, then the mind will continue to create something one needs protection from. Okay. Number 527. The outer world is the dream. The fear is broaching the door lintel of the holy of holies. When you get to the door of the holy of holies, this great terror arises because you are leaving all the seen world all that you know, all you have experienced behind, deconstructed to know truth, to become truth, to find truth that is eternal. And one leaves that transient behind and the transient becomes a dream So number 528, the fact you are questioning and in fear shows you are indeed in a type of hell now. Okay, the fact you are questioning and in fear shows you are indeed in a type of hell now. You are not at this point in peace or settled, but you have a chance to come out of it. Number 529, most lives at this point seem to be based upon suggestibility rather than relaxing into what is here and now. Learn to be here and now rather than what might be or what is feared and then being pulled into that. 
Quit looking for an escapism. Quit running in fear. Quit clinging to if only. Really come to what is here and now, minus the constructed illusions one has woven around it. One has to penetrate through that. Number 530, there is nothing that may touch you if you do not open self yourself to it by fear. Again, let me read that. There is nothing that may touch you if you do not open yourself to it by fear. This is why Christ always said, fear not. Greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. Fear not. Number 531, God does not know fear. Let me read this again. God does not know fear. Fear is of duality. Ego. God is perfection. Pure, pristine, is. There is nothing to fear as what one fears is only made of shadow substance. Poof! Okay. <laughs> That's how much reality it genuinely has. So don't give it more reality than what it has. You can make it feel very real. You can go beyond that. Go beyond that. Okay, last but not least, 532. What is fear? What is his basis? How do we move beyond it? It's a sad commentary. But indeed, most do run their lives around desire and fear. Fear lurks for most as a driving force. Fear of poverty drives people to succeed. Fear creates desires to have more or be more. Fear of hell drives some to their knees. Fear of death drives yogis to attempt to attain a body that will survive for eons or drives the not-so-ambitious to run to health clubs and vitamin shops. What is this fear? What is it fear from which everyone runs? Why does it appear? What's its nature? How can it be overcome? Well, fear comes from the trepidation of the unknown. Let me read that again. Fear comes from trepidation about the unknown. Everyone says they trust and believe in God. But when your life is on the line and the time to sacrifice it to truth has come, is that total trust there? This is where surrender comes in total and complete surrender. It's one thing to mouth the words of being surrendered and quite another to actually do it. This is why self-realization is so important. Whether it comes from a bhakti path or the path of jnana, it is only when a place of total surrender is gained, that the illusions of fear are no more. In bhakti, one becomes so enamored of God in whatever form that moves one, that they are able to utterly surrender in total trust. 
When the eternal one is known, then fear has no place. Now, when I say one is known, I mean known, not known about. Most say they know, but no, they know about. Known is something beyond a shadow of a doubt. In Gyan, the ego self is torn away by meditation, witness, self-inquiry, and contemplation. Through the process of stilling the mind, until a point of surrender takes place in which one jumps into the unknown and is pulled by grace into the ever-present source. Dissolution of ignorance, of bondage, of egotistic self then occurs. What remains is God as absolute, still, shakti, motion, one, forever non-dual. This equates with nirvana or nibbana, whichever way you wish to say it, or being blown out. In Buddhist terms, nibbana, being blown out, what struggles and fears is simply the cognition of ego. What struggles and fears is the cognition of ego, of being the limited body and form which has a beginning and an end. Within bhakti path or the path of jnan, the ego loses its ability to control and drive the sadhaka. Through sadhana, one learns to surrender to the one. In surrender, the mind is stilled. The ego passes away until only the primary source or one is known. Once known, there is nothing left to fear for all of the transient is simply empty in nature. It's empty in nature, made of the material of dreams. Source is eternal, beyond birth, beyond death. And so whether one surrenders in bhakti, until they are simply the moving embodiment of the personal Ishvara, or whether they are blown out while being pulled into a nirvakalpa samadhi, where only source is known, where only source is, it matters not. In either case, fear no longer holds any power or sway. Fear is the substance of things unknown or past ideations of failure, or the cognition that this world is transient and there's nothing else. The way to overcome all of these ideas is through a spiritual life. Through the path of surrender and living, now instead of past or future, allows one to break through to stillness in action, zero point balance. Not my will but thine be done translates out to the surrendered actions of a realized being which is spontaneous and unencumbered, no doubt, no fear. This is the sattvic way of God called the ever present fullness of infinite potential, which is perfection in flow. Let me read that again. 
This translates out to the surrendered actions of a realized being, which is spontaneous and unencumbered, no doubts, no fears. The sattvic way of God, called the ever-present fullness of infinite potential, which is perfection in flow. Many fears are based on what if and in reality have no substance whatsoever. If one begins at this moment to live in the now, not in the projected what if, future or the past, which is coloring the cognition of now, so many of the illusions of fear may be put away. The path to self-realization is step by step. First begin to see now, clearly, without the colorizations of past or future what-ifs. When the mind wanders, bring it back to now. So important. If you find yourself daydreaming about what-if, future ruminations come back to now. If you find yourself stuck in past drama, Bring yourself back to now. Mantras are a good way to focus the mind on something other than the numerous risings of thoughts. Of course, each path will have different avenues to bring the unruly mind to a settled and still flowing stream. There is nothing to fear but fearing the fear. Let me read that again. There's nothing to fear but fearing the fear. When the truth of God or self-realization is known, you will laugh in abandon because it's clearly seen that the only thing that was to be feared was your own limited mind. The only thing to be feared was your own limited mind. God is all, the only existence. Therefore, what is there to fear? Death is an unreality. Simply the overcoat comes off and the subtle body moves onwards to fulfill its course. To overcome fear, one must be willing to surrender and walk through it. And on the other side, there will be simply laughter that remains. Fear was simply an empty demon created by the mind of Maya. Fear is an empty demon created by the mind of Maya. When paid no attention, it will die from lack of fuel. When confronted, it will simply dissipate, as it has always been simply an empty illusion. Fear has no substance other than what you yourself give it. If one does not label fear, they will simply cognize that it's a rush of energy through the system. And that's all. Minus the mental attachments, it is only moving energy. Let me say that again. Minus the mental attachments and labels you put on it, it is only moving energy. So what to do? when fear strikes. What does one do? Either surrender to guru or God, all within trust or love, and simply sit through it or see it as nothing more than a moving energy and do not feed it by chasing after the mentations. 
in not running from it, thereby sustaining the illusion, it will pass away and the truth will become known. Fear is simply mental projections built upon ignorance of the eternal truth called God. Fear has no place within God, who is the life of all life and the death of all death. When the mind waves dissolve in God or self-realization, all of the illusions will simply blow away. And what remains is the liberation which has always been, but has simply been covered over by mind's ego's illusion. Transient waves are known to be only surface, motion, momentary, the ocean of absolute shakti is one forever pristine potential of is. And so there you have it, the excerpts from the Song of the Butterfly, fly, Finding the Freedom Within. So I hope you've gotten something from this. Again, these things have to be challenged. They have to be set through. Like Buddha said, the string cannot be too tight. It cannot be too loose. It has to be middle way so it will play. Okay? There is a way forward. There is a way to come out of it. Okay, to that infinite freedom. What remains is termed the play of God. Okay, when that illusion is broken through, <clears throat> simply the play of God remains. That spontaneous flow, unencumbered, unhindered. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. I hope you've gotten something from it, that you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, got something from it, please put a thumbs up on it. Thank you and have a great evening. Namaste.